Hello, I am Pastor Horace Dowdy in Lexington, Virginia. And each Sunday, I bring you a Bible meditation by way of YouTube. And I encourage you, subscribe to Horace Dowdy, D-O-U-T-Y, YouTube. And share it with your family and your friends. I appreciate that. Today, the subject of the sermon is one word, winter. Winter has a mind of its own. All over the planet, people have agreed that winter makes up the coldest months. Here in Virginia, winter means January through March. In other regions, winter may come in July, August, but one fact seems universal. Winter is not considered the best season. The poet Shelley wrote wistfully, If winter comes, can spring be far behind? Clearly, winter is something to be endured. I have never found it unpleasant. Even so, I can easily understand how most warm-blooded creatures prefer warm weather. During my early childhood on the farm, the big barn was most enchanting during frigidly cold weather because every farm animal was, was home there to be fed or milked or cared for at night. Inside, even on the coldest winter night with the wind blowing outside, the air inside was warm and fresh and fragrant. I enjoyed the contrast. To this day, I look upon snow with pleasure and excitement, but others seem to dread the challenge of winter. Now, the book of Psalms in the Old Testament very cheerfully affirms that God made both summer and winter. And this sermon examines ways we can deal with the inevitable season. Shelley wrote, if winter comes. Well, he should have said, when winter comes, because it surely will. Sometimes the human spirit suffers wintry darkness without regard to the weather or the season. Disappointment and grief can strike any time. And Jesus was no exception. He had his share of winter, wintry times. Remember his 40-day struggle in the wilderness. He emerged gaunt with hunger. Jesus often spent entire nights in prayer on the hills. His agony in the Garden of Gethsemane touches your heart. Christ understands wintry gloom. Some people are gifted. They can carry spring sunshine with them. You may be one of them. They enter a tense room where the conversation is hostile, maybe on religion or politics, and they speak a gentle word which completely diffuses the atmosphere. Every one of you has at some times been comforted and cheered by a friend who knew that you were in pain and offered the word or the touch that you needed. I encourage you, go and do likewise. Breaking hearts are all around you. They crave the sunshine that you can offer. Did you know that wintertime can also change your body chemistry? Your flesh relies heavily on vitamin D, which is transmitted through sunlight. In winter, two things happen. Short days mean less sunlight, and even in full sun, the light has to travel farther on its way to earth and is diluted chemically. Psychiatry has come up with a new illness, seasonal affective disorder, SAD. Your gloomy depression is not your fault. No matter how robust your psyche may be, the lack of sun shower, sunshine and sun power can bring on seasonal affective disorder, SAD. The obvious solution is travel south and lie on a hot, sunny beach. Fortunately, the Bible offers practical advice on which can be utilized immediately anywhere on earth 
and during any season, Jesus Christ spent his life teaching you how to have abundant life, which simply means happiness. And here are some of the things that he said. Judge not that you not be judged. You, have, you like to criticize your in-laws, your president, your neighbor's spouse. Such judging does nothing productive. It hurts you. The last thing it offers is happiness. Jesus also insisted that you treat others as you yourself wish to be treated. So before you speak or act, ask yourself, how would I like to be the object? My words and actions, do they help or do they hurt? How would I feel if everybody judged me harshly? Consider Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. He began by offering a sequence of winter and spring. And we call these surprising statements the Beatitudes, ways to happiness. Quote, he said, happy are the poor in heart, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are those who grieve, they shall be comforted. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for goodness, they shall be satisfied. In every example, your wintry attitude can turn into springtime. Give it a try. You will be pleasantly surprised. Even when it sounds counterintuitive, follow the advice of Jesus. Your life will be more fruitful and more fun. Speaking of fruitfulness, did you know that many of the plants that give us food demand and must have severe winter cold before they can bring forth fruit in the spring? We mistakenly speak of plants hibernating, but no, that's not the word. They are not asleep. Their magical factories are working to produce, using sub-freezing temperatures, sustained and stubborn, in order to propel and produce germination. Without the season of harsh winter, many nuts and fruits would not awaken in spring. Take comfort in that knowledge. Wintertime, whether physical or spiritual, may be doing something good for you. The stress may actually condition you for greater abundance. Cultivate that attitude and you will be glad. The Bible gives us another antidote for wintry blues. Here it is. Finally, friends, fix your thoughts on what is true and good. Concentrate on things that are pure and lovely in this world. Make note of what is attractive and good in other people. Think of all the things you can praise God for, and you will enjoy peace from heaven. That is in the book of Philippians. Now, I wish newscasters around the world would at least experiment with that advice, because of most of them if it isn't bad news, then it isn't news at all. No wonder our people suffer from pessimism. It's in their diet, and it seems to be addictive, so provocative that many people actually get angry when I suggest that our world is getting better, not worse. And my response is, okay, if you prefer bitter to sweet, then make your choice. One reason that bad news sells is because it is not the norm. It's unusual. Good news is so plentiful, we learn to disregard it. Bad people are doing bad things, but for every bad guy, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of good, we call them ordinary citizens. I challenge you, instead of making a list of what's wrong in this world, make a list of what's right. It will be endless far surpassing bad. Don't overlook the very next breath that God gives you. Recognize what a blessing that you enjoy in this fertile valley of Virginia. You live in a land of liberty, free to gather. You're surrounded by dear friends, sweet people, and no matter how cold it gets, you have a snug home awaiting you. You will not go to bed hungry. You have people that love, people who love you. Make your list. Let the winter hymn lift your spirit. 
See how, and notice how the solemn splendors of the night burn brighter through the cold. Life mounts in every throbbing vein. Love deepens round the hearth. Winter is good. Even in the winter, remember, the days are getting longer. Winter pleasures will soon be over. If your chemistry gets out of line, be thankful for antidepressants. Colorful seed catalogs, catalogs come during the winter. Examine one or more. Cherish the exciting pleasure because when winter comes, spring is not far behind. With this sensible advice in your Bible, you can enjoy winter and be ready for spring. Amen. God bless you all.